Greetings in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior. Here we are once again by God's grace and goodness, not by strength and power of our own. God woke us up this morning and we are thankful and should be. So we welcome you to this, the Know Your Bible program. We're here on Church Media TT on YouTube. So we encourage you, if those of you who are on may not have a link, a direct link, then just tell whoever you are spreading the news to that they just need to go to YouTube. And of course, they can type in Church Media TT and you will get this channel and then you will have access to all the content. Now, remember, if you subscribe and also click that notification bell, it means that the device you're on, on which you subscribe and click, will notify you or alert you to every time we have new content. So you can look forward to that in case you might forget until you get really accustomed and you make a real provision to set aside this time to be able to hear the word of the Lord. And of course, we try not to make the program too long so that you will be able to grasp from it and it perks up your interests. And we are looking at the distinctive identity of the New Testament church. It's an important subject. Okay, let's give God thanks before we pick up the study this morning. Father, once again, Lord, we approach your throne of grace and mercy and we acknowledge and we pay tribute to you, O Lord, as the sovereign ruler of this magnificent universe in which we live. You are Lord God, omnipotent, omni omnipresent, Father, omniscient. And we pray, O Lord, Father, that we will recognize your supremacy and look to your word, Father, for the guidance for our lives and to find out the truth that will set us free. Help us to know, O Lord, that the gospel declares your remedy for sin, Father, through the sacrifice of your only son to pay a price that we could not pay. Lord, as I declare this message, I pray that you will cover me in the shadow of the cross. And that your Holy Spirit, O oh Lord, will declare this word that I may just be the instrument that you will use to so, to so do. I pray, Lord, that hearts will be open and that we will reach many, O oh Lord, to come to know you before it's too late. Through Christ our Lord, we pray. Amen. Okay, so I want to encourage once again all of the members of the body of Christ. <clears throat> Please note that this is an opportunity. A lot of people often say, you know, I can't really, I think I don't know enough to sit down and study the word of God with somebody. Well, if you understand, or if you understood what you needed to do to be saved, then you need to polish up on that, be clear on it for your own good, and then you can share that with others. And they may ask you some questions that you may not know. That's where you could seek someone's help. But this program provides a platform for us to expose the gospel to many persons. If our members of the body of Christ would be convicted to know that God looks to us to share our faith with others, we provide you with this tool that you can share with others. As many, you have a lot of friends. And if they are your friends indeed, then let them know of the gospel of Christ. Perhaps you keep this gospel from them because you think that they might not want to hear it, but that's their choice. But you know what? If they would have, and you kept it, one day when we go before God in judgment, they might say, you know, Lord, he saw me day by day. He or she knew I was astray, but they never mentioned you to me. And this gives you an opportunity to mention Christ. It may not be in a very direct way, but it provides the word of God. So take the opportunity and send the link or send the information to many persons some might tune in and you never know who will obey the gospel of christ okay all right so we're looking at the distinctive identity of the new testament church and we have said in our first lesson what the church is not it's not a denomination it's not a social club 
It's not a physical institution and therefore it is something spiritual which we find in the scriptures. So we move to look at what then is the church? What is the New Testament church? And we saw that it was defined by the word ecclesia, which means the called out. We saw an example in Acts chapter 19 where there was an uproar and of course the mob was becoming a righteous mob and the town council had to step in and to bring some order and to say to those folks that this matter is not difficult to resolve but if you're not happy there is a lawful assembly in which these matters could be resolved for if you fail to do that and you continue in this vein then you are in danger of becoming you know a, 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 a righteous assembly one that is is contravening the law and you'll be in trouble so here there we find that the word ecclesia is used for the assembly where people will, would be called out from wherever they were to come to the assembly so that they can deal with the matter at hand so to the greeks the assembly was the place where people were called out from their homes and businesses to meet together to discuss some matter of importance and so when we put that into the spiritual context and in the context of scripture the assembly here refers to those who are called by god through the gospel to become part of his body and so we said that the gospel message is the call of god god already predicted that there will be those who will depart from the faith and the faith is distinctive it's not just any faith it is the faith and that faith is not your personal faith but faith there is used as referring to the gospel that body of truth that god gives so then in the last program then we were looking at how we identify the new testament church there must be some ways in which we identify the New Testament church. First of all, we said then that the church that read up in the New Testament comprises the saved from sin. Remember Matthew 1 21, Jesus, the angel said to Mary, You will bear a son, and his name shall be called Jesus, for he shall what? Save his people from their sins. So Jesus is the Savior. How is he the Savior? He's the Savior through his death burial and resurrection he qualifies he offered what was required in order to be able to save the world and so acts chapter 2 we saw last time peter proclaimed the gospel and the gospel was proclaimed in the language of the people that were there and they heard the word of god and peter convicted them with the gospel that christ died was buried but God raised him from the dead and made him Lord and Christ. When therefore the Jews heard this, they were cut to the heart, convicted, evidence of their belief. And they said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? And Peter says, repent, change your mind. You guys, you know you've done the wrong thing, right? You had the wrong things in your head. Change, change that, change it. Get that out of your heart and be baptized for the forgiveness of your sins and you shall receive the gift of the holy spirit so the holy spirit is the gift of god this does not speak of a gift from the spirit such as some miraculous element but rather the holy spirit is the gift now what would you prefer would you prefer a gift from the spirit or would you prefer the spirit himself as the gift God gives gifts according as he wills. So it's God who determines if you will have a gift and of what nature it would be. So here it is that Peter told the folks and 3,000 people responded and obeyed the gospel. And the Bible says the Lord added to the church on a daily basis all those who were being saved. So once you obey the gospel of Christ, you don't run off somewhere and join some church somewhere. No, no, no. You are identified with the New Testament church. You now become part of the spiritual body of Christ. Therefore, you are joined to the disciples. 
you are joined to the 3,000 and everybody else who obey that same gospel will be placed in that same company, in that same spiritual body. So you'll have one body and you may now have areas in which this body will meet different localities and those local assemblies may be called local congregations where they come together or assemble but the doctrine and the practice is the same as identified in the new testament now if there is a departure from that truth and some move away from it then they move outside of the body of christ and they set up their own stuff because they move away from where god has placed them then in Acts chapter 20, we also read, after Paul calls the elders in Ephesus together, because he's going to take his departure, and he's giving them a warning. He says, Take heed therefore unto yourselves, and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers, to tend the flock of God, which is among you, tend the flock of God, which he has purchased, with his own blood huh ah so the church the same were purchased by the blood of jesus these are pictures we get in scripture that helps us to identify the new testament church the church is considered the blood-bought people christ shed his blood as the purchase price to get us out from under the power of satan under the power of darkness and bring us into his marvelous light colossians 1 13 for you speaking to the christians who were delivered from the power of darkness and you have been translated into the kingdom of god's dear son so now we move from under the kingdom of darkness under the rule of satan and we are now in the kingdom of god which is the church the spiritual body of christ remember matthew 16 remember what jesus said you are peter and upon this rock i will build my church and i will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven i will give you the keys to the kingdom i will build my church and i will give you the keys to the kingdom kingdom and church are not two different things christ said he would build his church and then by saying he will give peter the keys to what he built he defined it as the kingdom given us another concept of what the spiritual body or the new testament church is all about the picture of the church says that it is those who are saved called by the gospel and responded and now become part of the spiritual body of christ in as much as the church is built upon the foundation who is christ but the picture of that church or that group of people being the kingdom is saying christ is the king and the proof of kingship of jesus is the resurrection the proof of christ as the head of the church is the resurrection the proof of him being king of the kingdom is the resurrection and so in the picture of the church as the spiritual body of christ christ is the head and we are the members in the picture of it being the kingdom of god christ is the king and we are all of his subjects in the domain over which he rules now jesus rules over his domain for his people who are citizens of that kingdom and citizens of that kingdom get all the blessings of the king this is important so the church is the purchased with the blood of christ but the church is also the sanctified those who are set apart now you see remember we have been moved from the power of darkness and put into the kingdom of god's dear son which is the light so we are set apart so paul says to the church at corinth in his address to them paul an apostle of christ by the will of god and timothy our brother to the church of god now here it is is the church of christ a church of god well they are not titles they are descriptive terms is it church or is it kingdom well the pictures referring to the same group of people 
So, kingdom church refers to the same group of people. Church of Christ would refer to the same group of people. Church of God would refer to the same group of people, provided that those people are following what the New Testament pattern is all about. And they're following the word of God. So they are one in doctrine and one in practice. And these are the pictures that help us to identify the New Testament church. So the church is the sanctified, the saved who are set apart in Christ, in his body, and they don't belong in every man-made institution that has been created out there by somebody based on some idea or thought. Then the church clearly, as we said, is the body of Christ. In Ephesians chapter 1 and verse number 21 through 23, we are told that God has put all things under his Christ's feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. Now, what is the church? It is the body of Christ. Did I say that? Did I make that up? No. Paul says he is the head of the body, the church. What is the church? The church is the body of Christ. What is the body? The body is the church. The church is the body and the body is the church. Christ is the head of the body, the church. Then in Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 4, Paul as he lists the seven ones, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, he starts off by saying, for there is one body. Now if the church is the body, Ephesians 1, and there is one body, then by the simple law of mathematics, how many churches are there? How many churches does Christ have? One. If the church is the body of Christ, and Paul says there is one body, then there is one church. It belongs to Christ. Not mine. It must not wear my name because it belongs to Christ. So it's the church of God. It belongs to God. Christ is God. It's the church of Christ. It belongs to Christ. Descriptive terms designating ownership, not titles. Because you can put a title over a building and then doing your own thing, contrary to what God says. That doesn't mean that you belong to Christ. So the church is the sanctified. The church is the body of Christ. And we are all members one of another. Read 1 Corinthians 12. Paul will show that we are individual members. We perform different functions. Your hand doesn't walk. You don't walk on your hand. You walk on your feet, correct? You don't think with your toe. You think with your brain, right? You don't see with your nose. You see with your eyes. You smell with your nose. And you hear not with your eyes, but with your ears. So they have different functions. So here's the picture. As your body has many members, one head, and the members having different functions, so the spiritual body of Christ has many members, all with different functions, different giftedness, but there's one head. And that head provides what all the rest of the body needs. The church is also the body of the reconciled. For Paul says in Ephesians 2 that God in Christ on the cross has reconciled both Jew and Gentile in his body. So to be reconciled means to be made friends with again. It first tells us that there has been some kind of falling out, some kind of separation, some kind of estrangement. So two people who are good friends have an argument and they fall out. So they're no longer friends they don't have a relationship but somebody is able to come along perhaps as a mediator hear both sides help resolve the issue and then the two people reconcile happens in a marriage husband and wife fall out can't get along decide to separate but they enter counsel and somebody neutral helps to resolve the issue and then they reconcile it means to be made friends again. So the church is the body of the reconciled saying those who were once outside of Christ, enemies of God because of sin, but now their sins are forgiven, washed away, they have become one with Christ. And therefore that oneness is in the body, is in the church. How do we identify the New Testament church? It is the body of the saved. 
It is those who are purchased with the blood of Christ who obey the gospel. They are those who are sanctified. They are set apart in Christ. God places them. They are the body of Christ, members in particular of which Christ is the head. They are the reconciled. They are now friends again with God. They are referred to as the spiritual bride of Christ, Ephesians chapter 5. The church is the spiritual bride of Christ. Christ is like the husband, and the church is the bride who obeys the husband. What's God's plan? One man, one woman for life. Okay? Jesus has one bride, not several brides who look alike. No, no, no. It's one bride, and you identify that bride, and he knows who that bride is. That bride, that body, refers to those who have obeyed the gospel that the apostles preached. Those who have been purchased and took the appeal to the blood of Jesus. Those who are set apart in Christ and they are sanctified. Those who make up the individual, the members of the body of Christ as individuals and carry out their functions as per the command of God. And that spiritual bride of Christ and the church are those who are spiritually in God. We are in Christ. That's where we have our salvation. That's where we have our redemption. The church is also referred to as the pillar and ground of the truth in 1 Timothy 3 and 15. It's the house of God. Paul says that till I come you may know how you ought to behave in the house of God. That's the church. That's the body of Christ. Remember, it's not a physical institution. And he says it is, the church is the what? The pillar and ground of the truth. There's no lookalike. The church is the enrolled in heaven, Ephesians chapter 12 and 23. The church comprises those who are enrolled in heaven. So if you are saved, guess what? Your name is enrolled in heaven. Isn't that beautiful? And finally, it is the institution in which God will be eternally glorified. God will not and cannot be glorified in an institution that was started by man. No sir, no ma'am. Join us next time. We're going to look at how to become a member of the New Testament church. Okay? So don't miss that out. We're going to close this little mini-series by showing you from Scripture how to become a member of the New Testament church. Join us then. Until next time, I am Mahesh Pissinger, bidding you God's blessing. Believe, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe What the Bible tells me I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe That he died on Calvary I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe That he came to set me free in me So I might live with him in glory I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe. When the Bible tells me I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe That he died on Calvary, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe That he came to set the free, free, free So I might live with him in glory